everybody, welcome back to another very exciting Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez. How's it going? I hope you're doing well. It's a beautiful Monday morning for me. Let me know where you're watching from, if it's daytime, afternoon, or evening. I already see a lot of familiar faces. First of all, thank you so much for being in the chat and helping out. Sam, as always, we have Steve. How's it going, Steve? Sean, Viola, Christina. Chad, thank you so much for watching. As always, let me know if you can hear me. I want to make sure that the audio is good before I get rolling. Um, but yeah, it looks like um, we have just a lot of people watching as usual. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Uh, Kaylee, Michelle, how's it going? Richard, Cheryl, Colby, thank you so much for joining. Ferry is in the chat as usual. Good to see you, Ferry. Awesome. It's 2 p.m. here in Suriname. Awesome. I've Good to see good to see you and uh, your name is Malik. Good to see you Malik. Hey Mallory, how's it going? Happy Monday Jacqueline. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, yeah, so today we're gonna have another awesome Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I hope that you enjoy it. Let me quickly show, uh, switch over to my screen so I can show you a couple things, which is this is the main um, the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge page from here. All you need to do is click on this big blue button to join the challenge with me, to take the challenge with me. You'll be notified via the Creative Cloud app for more Photoshop Daily Creative Challenges. But what I want you to do is scroll down onto this page and download the Getting Started Assets if you want to follow along with me or you're welcome to use your own images. As you know, this set of Daily Creative Challenges feature a new, um, uh, showcases a new feature of a new tool in Photoshop 2021. Today, we're not really gonna talk about a new tool. We're going to talk about improvements made to an older tool, and that is a select and mask workspace. So you can think about this stream as a crash course on the select and mask workspace, and I'm gonna show you how I would change the background on an image. So that's what we're going to learn today. Cool. So um, one other thing I wanna mention is that if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you head, head over into behance.net slash live, behance.net slash live, so that you can follow along with me and so that I can read your comments. I cannot read your comments if you're typing them up on YouTube. I can only see them on Behance. So cool. Once you've downloaded that file, we can get started. Um, so yeah, let me just see if there's any questions in the chat and make sure that everybody can hear me. It looks like everything is all good we have james from south texas that's awesome good to see you james ah good question arena do we have a video of last friday's challenge for the logo design it's not up yet but it will be up um, very very soon i'll let you guys know in on discord when it's up good question um let me see if there's any other questions cool all right so maybe by now you probably had time to download the asset files and I'm going to get started. I'm going to open up Photoshop and this is what you should have. We're working with a document with two layers. We have a background layer and this foreground layer, which is of this lady standing, young lady standing here looking out into the distance. So we want to change the background and there's a lot of ways of making a selection in Photoshop, but these days, in my opinion, the easiest way is to use the Selected Mask workspace with a layer selected. You can simply go into Select and click on Selected Mask, and this new panel will open up that allows you to make selections and layer masks, depending on the output that you select here at the bottom. Output to Layer Mask, or you could do a different number of other options layer mask is usually the way to go in, in if you come into this um, workspace and as you can see by default you're going to have the onion skinning mode this is the view set to 50 percent so anything that is not selected uh, will have 50 percent transparency and once you select something it will have 100 percent transparency so let's look at the tools that are in this panel on the left hand side we have a bunch of different tools Let's start with the first one. The first one is the quick selection tool. And the quick selection tool allows you to simply click and drag to make a selection. See how I'm clicking over his face and I'm selecting her face. See how now her face has 100% transparency. That is because she's now selected. And if you need to adjust the transparency, you can. See how I'm adjusting the transparency? Maybe in this case, since we have a busy background, we can move it up to about 70 so that we can really tell what we're selecting. And we can now move on to the next tool. Actually, the next tool is the Refine Edge tool, which uh, we're gonna look at a little later on, so I'm gonna skip it for now. 
Then we have the brush tool, which allows you to add or subtract to the selection based on the option that you have set here in the options bar. So you can just click and drag to paint in pixels. This is just like painting with the brush tool on the layer mask. Black hides, white reveals. In this case, you just have to click on these icons to add or subtract or to reveal or hide. Then we have the object selection tool. I'm gonna to come back to that in a moment. I'm gonna skip it for now. After that, we have the lasso tool and the polygonal lasso tool. The lasso tool allows you to freehand a selection like so, and it adds it to the selection. The polygonal lasso tool allows you to click on one area and then at a point and then click again at a second point and so on and so forth to create a selection like you see there. This could be great for buildings, cars, and other uh, man-made objects. The zoom tool obviously zooms in and the hand tool allows you to pan. You can double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. And what I'm gonna do now is show you one of the tools that I skipped over, which was the object selection tool. The object selection tool has two modes, the lasso mode and the rectangle mode. The rectangle just makes a square version of what I'm about to do with the lasso tool. The lasso tool allows you to freehand a selection and anything in that selection will be analyzed by Adobe Sensei, which is Photoshop's artificial intelligence and it will make a select, it'll find the edges and make a selection. So this could be a really, really fast and easy tool to help you get started in making selections. If you're working in images that have more than one main subject, maybe you have a photo of two people standing side by side and you only want to select one, you can use this tool to draw a freehand selection around the person. You don't have to be precise. And then Photoshop will analyze the contents of that selection and select the main subject. But in this case, since we only have one person, I could have simply just clicked on select subject as soon as I came in here. If I click on select subject, Photoshop will tell me I'm going to disregard your current selection. Do you want to continue? I'm going to press OK. And it will use that same artificial intelligence to find the edges of my foreground element, in this case, this person, and it will make a selection around it. And it does a very good job. So usually, usually this is how I start all my selections if I'm using a layer mask, just by using the select subject feature or the remove background feature in the properties panel. Let me see if there's any questions. Um, cool. Um, the question is, oh, uh, wait, since when was select inside a, wait, uh, oh, um, select uh, object select inside a selected mask. The question from Christina is when was this tool added into select and mask? And the answer to that, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say 2019, I want to say, um, but it hasn't been there for too long, about a year, maybe a little longer. Cool. <clears throat> so now that we have our main subject selected, I'm going to change the view just so that you can see what the different views look like. We have a uh, on black view on white, meaning it'll just replace the background to black or white. And you can see the, the different options there. We'll leave it on white since I think it'll showcase the next part better. Actually, even better. We'll go into black and white so you can really, really see. And in this case, um, notice that we have her hair and she's got this furry coat. So there's not really going to be any real fine edges, maybe her nose or the bottom part of the jacket. But the point is, is that in, a lot of times when you use the selected mask, um, artificial intelligence, you're going to get really jagged edges. So what I like to do is I like to increase the smoothing just to smooth out some of those edges. I know it's going to be detrimental to the fur in her hair, but that's okay. I, I'm going to do that in a separate step. I'm just worried about things like this part that should be smooth and are not. Then what I like to do is increase the contrast like so. And then this is usually something I do on all my images, just increase the smoothing and increase the contrast. And one new feature of Photoshop 2021 is that you can actually save presets out of the adjustments that you make on these controls. By the way, these controls are the global refinements and they affect the edges of your selection. So that's what we're adjusting with these controls, the edges of your selections. And what I was saying before is, since I'm always applying these same filters or same controls, rather same adjustments is what I should have said, is that you can actually save them now as a preset. So under presets, you can go into your um, save preset option 
and you can just call it um, starter, for example, in this case, starter adjustments, because I always do it in, in the beginning. And that'll save me the time. Whenever I come in here, if I make different adjust, uh, uh, I'll just reset it to zero. So if, if they're set, um, when you first come in, everything's set to zero, right? You can go into your custom presets now and select the starter adjustments and then Photoshop will make those adjustments for you. So that saves you a little bit of time if you find yourself using similar adjustments like I do. Smoothing and contrast is something that I do in most cases. So I like to just have a preset that helps me set those up. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to double click on the hand tool to see what I got. And it's not perfect, but that's okay. I was only worried about the sharp edges. What I'm gonna do now is press okay <clears throat> let Photoshop apply those adjustments and actually it applied them as a selection because I didn't have the um, mask option enabled. I thought I did. So let me go back in here and let me add it as a, oh, see right here, output two, I have selection. I needed to have it as a layer mask. I'll press okay and there we go. There's our mask. So we have our layer mask active and what I'm going to do now is work on the other parts of the image. So I'm going to go back into the selected mask workspace by selecting the layer mask and clicking on select and mask. See that? Um, so I'm going to go in there twice. I went in there once to worry about the sharp edges, like the, like, you know, like her body, her, well, not really her coat, obviously, because her coat is furry, but anything that was, that was, a, that should be a smooth line. And now I'm going to focus on hair. And in this case on, the fur on her coat. And why am I doing it in two passes instead of one? The reason that I'm doing it in two passes instead of one is that, remember these global controls adjust everything. So if I, so if I make an adjustment to the smoothing like I did before, it will affect the hair as well and the contrast. So if I start adjusting the hair and at the same time I adjust these sliders, I'm going to get really, really weird results and they're not going to be very good. So what I prefer to do is first focus on the sharp edges of the selection, press OK, apply those adjustments and then come back and work on the hair. And earlier I said I was going to skip one of the tools, which is the hair refinement brush or not the hair refinement brush, the edge refinement brush which is used for our hair. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the onion skinning mode and actually I'll cancel this and I'll also disable the background just so that it's easier to see. So I'm going to go back into the selected mask workspace and I'm going to go into the onion skin mode and I'm just going to increase the transparency just so that we can see what we're working with. And what I'm going to do now is click on show edge, but I need to have one of the selection tools active show edge. And that's going to make everything disappear because I now need to increase my edge detection. So what this edge detection is doing is just simply creating a border around the image and it's going to create an edge where Photoshop will focus on the pixels that are there and it will try to separate the foreground from the background. So this is where the edge um, adjustments and detections appear. Usually I don't use this feature. What I like to do instead is um, previously to Photoshop 2021 is click on the edge refinement brush and just paint in um, the paint in over the areas where there is hair to refine those edges. See that like right here. And when I disable the show edge, you can see that Photoshop goes in there and tries to separate her hair from the background. So that's what I did previously. I enabled show edge again so that you can see what's going to happen. Photoshop has a new tool in Photoshop 2021 that allows you to do this with one click. If you click on refine hair, Photoshop will use the artificial intelligence and it will automatically find the hair. See that? See how it uh, found the hair? And it is the same thing as me clicking with this brush and painting over those areas. If you find that Photoshop doesn't do that good of a job, you can just click on the minus icon and then you can subtract from areas that Photoshop shouldn't be sampling. Like for example, in this case, I don't really want any edge detection there. So I can just paint that away. Um, but this is just um, a new feature that allows you to quickly find the hair in an image using artificial intelligence and Photoshop um, essentially paints over those areas or you can still do it by hand using this tool. So that's what this refined hair brush controls. You can see that here when I enable the edge. This is where the edge refinement is happening and the goal is that Photoshop 
we'll focus on these areas to try to um, try to um, separate the hair from the background. But in this case, we actually need to add to the edge because her coat is furry. So I'm gonna just click and drag on here and hopefully we can get better results as well. And something I didn't mention that is also new in Photoshop 2021 that really doesn't relate to this step, but rather the first step is that we have two modes. We have color aware and object aware. Photoshop automatically selected object aware, which is the better algorithm. This is the old algorithm. This is the new one. Object aware is better for selecting hair or fur up against busy backgrounds. So that's what Photoshop selected automatically for us. So um, now that I've adjusted uh, the hair on the image, I can press OK and Photoshop will make that change. See that? So this was before and this was after. So it's not, I'm not saying that after is 100% perfect, but it's much better. And we didn't have to worry about the global adjustment sliders because we did that in the first step. So I recommend that you do two steps when you use the selected mask workspace if you're working with someone who has hair or fur or something like that. Because the first step when you adjust the global refinement sliders will also affect the furry or hairy areas of the layer that you're working with. Let me see if there's any questions. Oh, it looks like there's an artifact on my, oh, here, sorry about that. There we go. <laughs> you, sorry about that. I noticed that you guys saw this little artifact thing that I just barely noticed. Cool. Let me see if there's any other questions. Awesome. Cool. So what I'm going to do now is now that we have the um, layer extracted from the background, I'm going to enable the background that I'm going to place her in. And this is really where I really start focusing on the actual um, composite. So let me just, um, oops, sorry about that. Let me just zoom out and I can click on the background layer, control T, command T to transform and scale it out and then just adjust it accordingly wherever I want my um, composite to be. And I'll probably flip the um, image horizontally because the sun is on the left hand side and you can see that the brightness of her face is on on this side if the sun's behind her then it wouldn't be so realistic so always keep your light sources in mind so now that i've done this i can come in here and just see any um any issues that my image may have so for example in this case it might be a good idea to create a new layer press Control alt g command option g on the mac and just select like this yellow ish whitish color I think uh, it's this tan color and then you can just paint with um, with the brush tool but I have a really huge brush so I'm going to reduce that size by tapping on the left bracket key and I can just paint in these details so they they match my scene better see that see how I'm just painting these details just to try to mimic the brightness of the of the sun hitting it I can double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen and just continue painting accordingly like so and I can reduce the opacity if it's too strong and also uh, change the blending mode to lighten um, if need be. But obviously you can spend a little more time fine tuning your layer to get the, the results that you want. The next step is to make the image more cohesive. And actually, you know what? There's one thing I'm looking at the time. I don't have a lot of time, but there's a couple of things I want to mention. Number one is if you find an area like this where the selection is just not good because it was too difficult to mask out. What you need to do is make uh, select that layer and just simply disregard um, that hair that was just too difficult to select. There's no need to keep um, hair that is just difficult to select and then make your composite ugly. Like people won't know the hair wasn't there to begin with. Whoever's looking at your composites in second, you can create yet another layer, clip it to the layer below, control alt G, command option G on the Mac, select um, a color found on her hair and then with a Wacom tablet or the mouse, whatever you have, you can come in here and start painting in uh, strands of hair. Um, and it looks like it's not painting it. Why is it not painting it? Do I have a selection active? Um, oh, sorry about that. I, I didn't need to clip it. I need it. Yep. Let me just delete those pixels. I said clip it, don't clip it, because then the uh, hair strands won't show. But the point is, is you can now come in here and start painting in 
your flyaway hairs. Obviously, I'm going quickly, but you'll get better results. Select different hair strands and just paint them back in um, in those areas. Also, to finalize the image, you can put everything into a smart object. So I'm going to select all the layers and I'm going to convert it into a smart object so that I can go into filter, camera raw filter. And from here, I can apply global adjustments. And I know that the, um, you know, it's going to look a little weird, but once I press OK, it's going to be fine. Um, you can go into the global adjustments and then maybe make the image a little bit warmer and, you know, adjust the different colors here to, to try to make the image um, become more cohesive. One thing that you can do to make an image cohesive, you guys already know, I do it in all my composites, is I add just a tiny little bit of grain um, just to make my images look more cohesive before and after. So that was a quick crash course on the Select and Mask workspace and how you can change backgrounds on your photos. I look forward to seeing what you do with this technique. Um, and oh yeah, you, uh, General Kenobi wrote and vignette. Yeah, I didn't add a vignette on this one. I didn't think it needed it, but usually I do add a vignette. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, the thing that I wanna show you guys now is Discord. So if you are following along with me, make sure that you submit your work onto the Discord community chat. You can click on this link. It's found under behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, and that will take you onto this page. And right up above my head, you'll see the current challenge tab and you can see the work that people have been submitting. So this is, um, you guys took great initiative and in coming up with these logos for the banana uh, creative crew or Adobe banana crew that we were um, working with on Friday before we were cut off. So some of these are actually way better than what I was gonna do. So maybe maybe I, I just won't re-record that <laughs> and you guys can watch these. Um, but anyway, um, these are fantastic. So thank you so much for submitting them. Um, there's also some sky replacements we did a couple days ago, some patterns, excellent, excellent work. So make sure that you come into Discord and submit your work on there. The Adobe mentors are there and the Adobe team. Also, if you decide to submit your work onto Behance, make sure that when you create a project, use the hashtag PS Creative Challenge, PS Creative Challenge, so that you can have an opportunity to be featured in the curated community gallery. And this are some of the selected projects that are featured in this gallery. Also, if you haven't already, make sure that you follow me on Behance. I am at JR from PTC, JR from PTC. I'm sure that the link to my Behance is, Behance is somewhere in there, in, in the chat, around the chat. Or I'm sure Tim, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Sam will post it and you guys can click on it and follow me if you like. Maybe not now because I called him Tim. I think that's the second time I do that. Sorry, Sam. Um, but anyway, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you stick around because we have a fun filled day. We have drawing and painting with Meg Lewis coming up next. So make sure that you stick around, go get a water break, come right back. It will start in just a few moments. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this stream and that you learned a lot and that you can create better composites now that you understand better how the Select and Mask, Select and Mask Brickspace works. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. Bye, everybody.